Hey guys, welcome to JR's Junk Drawer. I'm JR, and today we're going to be painting Beto, a Genshin Impact character and a personal favorite of mine. Now, I know with the whole Sumeru region coming out and with the release of Tower of Fantasy, that I have plenty of other content that I should probably be painting instead, but I've been wanting to paint Beto for a while and I'm finally getting around to it. But, Painting Beto wasn't just my idea. In fact, the suggestion comes in from the comment section. Thank you to Billy the Goose. Uh, I'm going to be drawing in Clip Studio Paint today. I've got a few ideas bouncing around in my head. So let's go ahead and head down to my computer where we can get started on it. My first thought was having Beto in a Captain Morgan-esque pose. Yeah, I did some sketching off camera, sue me. And I liked the pose, but I didn't want to jump into the first idea that crossed my mind either. It's always a good idea to try a few different concepts out before settling on one of them. Even if one of them jumps out at you, putting together a handful more sketches will only ever give you more practice. So it's never really a bad idea. My second sketch had Beto leaning against a wall, wasted, like fully drunk. After all, Beto can be spotted fairly often with drink in hand, so I did see the potential to move forward with this drawing, matching her character and all, but I also wasn't too attached to it either. Don't worry, third time's the charm, because I ended up using my third sketch. Now, you can argue that this might not be the best of the three sketches I had tried out, but I also had my reasons. A lot of you know that I always try to push myself outside of my comfort zone with every painting, at least a little. It's a good way of forcing yourself to improve and learn new techniques. And I don't paint characters from the side all too often. So that became my goal for this artwork. I envisioned this scene as Beto in Liyue Harbor locked in an adventurous gaze with the horizon. Adding little things like a tilt to the artwork can help it look more dynamic, and taking the time to line up the focal points to the rule of thirds can be a great place to balance a concept. Rule of thirds being just, if you were to divide your canvas into three separate sections, both vertically and horizontally, so you have a three by three grid, the points where your grid lines meet, those are your targets for where you want your focal points to mostly line up, and that would be the rule of thirds. Also, since I wanted to have good depth representation in this scene, I took a few seconds to map out my perspective lines leading to a vanishing point. Vanishing point's pretty straightforward. It's just the, if you were to take all your perspective lines and follow them throughout to infinity, where they all meet, that would be your vanishing point. And your vanishing point should line up with your horizon line, which is a handy little trick to be able to accurately place your horizon line to match the perspective of the rest of your scene. A lot of times that only takes a few seconds if you're familiar with spotting perspective lines. But whether you're experienced with perspective or you're just starting out, it is a technique well worth learning and becoming familiar with, especially when dealing with architecture as it gives you the perfect guidelines to see where everything lines up. And I don't know if you can see the scene starting to take shape with how rough some of my sketching is, but the background is starting to form a rough approximation of what Liyue Harbor looks like, at least with some artistic liberties taken that I've redesigned a few things. We've got a pier, so a, a dock kind of right here, a pathway on the side, and a staircase leading up to the rest of the city. Meanwhile, the foreground has Beto leaning against some railing with her hair undone, blowing in the wind. Next to her, she also has her drink and sword leaning against the railing as well. And I can already tell going into this painting that there are an absolute ton of details that I need to cover. But if I take my time to plot out my steps correctly from the beginning to end, it should turn out pretty good. Not to say that it won't be a serious amount of effort, because this painting is going to require properly mapping out where all my different colors go, making sure none of the colors really fight with each other too much for dominance over the scene, and I need to definitely make sure that my contrast levels properly balance, making sure that my foreground with Beto herself is still the primary focal point. I wouldn't want the background to steal the attention away from her. 
Now we've made some progress on the foreground and midground and all that, but the background is obviously still, honestly, a lot of this painting is still very unrefined. But I'm thinking we can kickstart the background's progress with a screenshot. So I actually booted up the game and went to Liyue Harbor and got a good perspective at some mountains and sky in the background and took a screenshot. <laughs> We're going to use that now to fill in the, well, sky and mountainous terrain for the background. You know, I don't usually use assets in this way. I typically would have referenced something and then proceeded to paint it, but filling in the background with this method definitely saved time, which I think was worth it considering how dense the rest of this painting is with details that I wanted to put more of my effort into. The fur collar and hair turned out to be particularly good in that regard. And for next week, I was considering putting together a tutorial on how to paint fur. I think that could be fun and informative. I just don't really have the time to go over it in this speed paint. Plus, I had lost a little bit of the footage of the actual process, so that was unfortunate. And I am sorry. That kind of thing just happens sometimes. If a fur tutorial does pique your interest, let me know down in the comments. Moving on to painting the hands. I already knew that I was going to have some difficulty painting them. <laughs> so I got in front of the camera and took a picture of myself leaning over a railing in a very similar manner. It's something that I've mentioned before, but whenever you feel that you're having some difficulty with a pose element, using yourself as reference art can be a great way to help you work through those difficulties. Of course, something like that doesn't do the work for you. You still need to handle the painting, but it at least gives you somewhere to start. Now, moving down to working on the railing itself, I needed this to feel like wood, coated with red paint. And painted wood still shows some of its grain. So as I fill in my lighting, I'm also following the direction of the grain with every brush stroke, so that I'm kind of Dual purpose here, also building up the texture that I want as well. But that only does so much to make it look like wood grain. So, kind of a little trick here, I leaned on the liquify tool to really capture the look I was going for. The best part is that this trick is actually really simple. Start by airbrushing in some speckles on a new layer. Then use the liquify tool to push and pull those speckles until they distort into streaks and swirls that follow the direction of the wood grain. Next, the layer should be changed to a multiply blending mode, and you should have a fairly good starting place for wood grain. But next up was probably one of the most time consuming and overall tedious parts of this painting process. Painting the water was this difficult because I didn't really have a technique nailed down for how I wanted to handle it. So I kind of just bounced around with a few different ideas, which results in a lot of painting back and forth over the same areas, trying to play with the design until I'm happy with something. And that's overall fine. It's a learning experience. Some of the techniques will work and some of them won't. But you should realize that while a speed painting format can make something look extremely fast and easy for your viewing enjoyment, there's still a lot of time and effort that goes into every brushstroke, of which there are literally tens of thousands. I'm not complaining about the process, only offering a reminder that while speed paints notoriously make things look easier than they really are, the painting process can oftentimes be tedious and filled with trial and error, even for an experienced artist. I mean, here, you could genuinely believe that I actually know what I'm doing, when in reality, I'm more or less testing my way through the process, trying out ideas that I only think will work. The point I'm trying to make is that if you're attempting to learn something from a speed painting, 
and even follow along with it, you should not rush the process. Instead, take your time and paint at your own pace, being mindful of your details. I guarantee you that the original artist did. Trust me, I know the pitfalls of following along with a speed paint. I've done it more than once myself. And one of the biggest is rushing the painting process because the speed paint has a habit of making things look easy. But every detail that you want to look good deserves its own fair share of TLC. And that perfectly fits into this painting because there were a lot of details. When I'm literally painting the straps on a shipping box, I already know it's going to be one of those paintings where there's just going to be so many little details. In this painting, I put a lot of effort into filling out the background with some heavily detailed items. And the funny part is that a lot of them ended up getting covered up by the sword I'll be adding into the foreground later. Once again, the sword was another point in the painting where I took some artistic liberties and played with the design. I wound up featuring aspects from several different Genshin Impact swords, and I'm overall happy with the blend I ended up with. Okay, I'm actually really happy with where we're at right now. This is looking pretty good. Um, We're not done yet though, so I still need to do some final lighting. Let's go ahead and dive into this and get started. Okay, I'm very happy with how this painting turned out. Like, there were a lot of experiments along the way in places where things could have gone wrong, but I think we ended up in a pretty good place. The fur turned out great and the process ended up being far more straightforward than I expected. I guess some of the techniques that I've picked up on over the many times I've painted fur at this point finally started to sink in. I am sorry that I lost a little bit of the footage during that part of the speed painting. Hey, these things happen. I'm also, uh, on the other hand, quite happy with how the water turned out, with all its intricate textures and reflections. It's been a while since I've painted water, like a standing body of water. I think the last time might have been a few years ago when I actually took a tutorial on the process myself, which is like the opposite of hair, which I get practice painting in every artwork, although this one did present its own challenges, mostly in the fact that different hair colors require slightly different coloring techniques, and brown hair is not one of the most common hair colors amongst the characters I've painted. But speaking of unique challenges, I feel I succeeded in the goal we set out to at the beginning with painting Beto from a side perspective. That was my whole motivation for picking this sketch to move forward with. I wanted to learn a little bit more about painting a profile of a face. And what can I say? I think that was a success that I learned from along the way. Every step along this painting was 
a learning process. I tried out a different style background. I tried out getting back into water again and uh, brown hair I don't have much practice at and the idea of the whole face and perspective on the body being from the side. Every aspect of this painting contributed to something outside of my comfort zone and therefore helped me learn more about painting. Honestly, I'm also a bit surprised how well using a screenshot for the furthest elements of the background worked. It ended up being a really good blend of everything kind of mashed together. It could have gone very, very differently if the two art styles ended up clashing with one another. And well, I'm glad they didn't. <laughs> I want to thank Billy the Goose again for taking the time to suggest Beto. Of course, if any of you have a suggestion as well, let me know down in the comments. I keep a running list of all suggestions and even if I don't find the time to get around to every character, I always appreciate everyone's ideas. Like I said, next week, I'll probably be diving into a tutorial, but we are also getting extremely close to 1000 subscribers. And I wanna do something special for that milestone, but I need your help for what I've got in mind. I wanna take a character that you've designed. So like an original character of your own and I'll put together an artwork featuring them. And then I'll add it to my shelf. Full credit to the original artists will be included and submissions are open to artists of any skill level. If you'd like to give me a stick figure drawn in crayon, that is perfectly perfect. And I will still put my full effort into the project. Now, of course, the more details you give me, the more true I'll be able to stay to your original design. Now, just to be clear, I can't say how I'm going to handle the artwork until I see how many submissions I get. It kind of affects what I might decide to do with the project. The last time I did anything similar to this, I got a big old zero submissions. <laughs> so yeah. Now I'm going to be taking the submissions through Instagram. Just make sure you use the hashtag JRJD1000 in your post. Like I said, we are getting really close to 1000 subscribers, probably even closer by the time this video releases. So I'll probably start work on that episode in the next few weeks or so, give or take an extra week if I'm already in the middle of another project. But that is going to be all for today. Of course, if you have any suggestions or questions, do not hesitate to post them down in the comments. I always read everything down there and I'm more than happy to explain anything in more detail. For more content like this, you can subscribe and hit the bell icon if you haven't already. And if you wanna help a small channel grow, liking and sharing the video with a friend is always appreciated. Anyways, thank you all for joining me today for this speed painting, and I hope to see you all next time.